joining us today. We're excited to bring you our second Living Well Beyond Cancer Survivorship Series presentation of 2022. Today's topic is Your Secret Weapon Against Cancer Exercise. The goal of this series is to provide all those whose lives have been affected by cancer with the tools and resources to live well beyond cancer. The team at Revital want to enable you to do things that are important to you. Things like going for a walk, returning to or continuing to work, caring for yourself, your children or a loved one, returning to the gym or any activity that makes you you. Our therapists are trained to help you identify and achieve goals specific to you. It is my honor to introduce our presenter today. Deanna Meehan. Deanna serves as a Revital Certified Cancer Rehabilitation Therapist at Kessler, a division of Select Medical's National Cancer Rehabilitation Program. Deanna's passion in treating the oncology population has only grown since becoming a Revital clinician in 2020. She enjoys educating and supporting her patients by helping them reach their personal goals in order to live their fullest life beyond cancer from diagnosis through survivorship. She has also recently completed coursework to become a certified lymphedema therapist through the Norton School of Lymphatic Therapy and is excited to expand her area of practice to help those afflicted by lymphedema. Deanna holds a doctorate of physical therapy and a bachelor's in biology from Seton Hall University. She serves as an adjunct professor in the physical therapy program at SHU, where she's provided guest lectures on the topic of cancer rehabilitation in the hopes of inspiring future clinicians and also to raise awareness about the field. After our presentation today, we will do a live Q&A. Please add any questions you have in the Q&A message box on your screen. All questions can only be viewed by the panel answering them. If we're not able to get to your question today, we will follow up with you this week by email. A reminder that this material is not intended to represent methods and or procedures available for the medical conditions discussed, but is only intended to present an approach, view, statement or opinion of the presenter, which may be helpful or of interest to patients caregivers or practitioners. Under no circumstances is information provided to serve as medical advice. Before we close, we will also review upcoming topics and how you can find a cancer rehabilitation specialist in your area. So now we're gonna play Deanna's fabulous presentation and we'll be back for the Q&A after it. To the Living Well Beyond Cancer Survivor Series. Today's topic is your secret weapon against cancer, exercise. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, my name is Deanna Meehan and I am a Revital Certified Cancer Rehabilitation Therapist at Kessler Rehabilitation Center in New Jersey. I'm excited to speak with you today about the role of exercise in your cancer journey. Staying as active as you can during and after cancer treatment is key to optimizing your ability to do what matters. Following a routine exercise plan can help manage any late and lasting effects of cancer treatment and help you live longer with a better quality of life. Today, I will discuss the differences between physical activity and exercise and what the general exercise guidelines are for individuals with cancer. I will give you some tips to starting and maintaining a healthy exercise and physical activity routine. I will also explain the benefits of a routine exercise program, when to reach out for support, the role of exercise experts, and why you might need them. Cancer is a journey, and we recognize not everyone's path is the same. Everyone starts in a different place. Your age, your beliefs, your support system of family and friends, your general health or well-being, among other factors, contribute to where you are at the beginning. Also, your destination may be different. Where are you going? Is your destination finishing treatment and putting cancer behind you? Is it living with a chronic condition, managing side effects, 
to lead as normal and independent a life as possible. Your destination is determined by the goals set between you and your medical team. Once diagnosed with cancer, your path may take you through different treatment choices, surgery, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and radiation are all customized by your cancer care team to meet your needs and get you to your destination. With this specialized treatment, each person's side effects and intensity of side effects will vary as well. The tolerance to treatment will be impacted by your general well-being and where you started at diagnosis. Our team wants to help you keep your motor running smoothly throughout your experience to your destination. As we begin, let's talk through what exercise versus physical activity is. Exercise is planned and structured physical activity to improve at least one aspect of fitness. There are many different types of exercise, including walking, weightlifting, running, cycling, dance, basketball, yoga, and tai chi, just to name a few. The four main categories of exercise include aerobic, stretching, strengthening, and balance. Many types of exercise include one or more of these categories. A well-rounded program includes more than one category to optimal function. On the other hand is physical activity. Physical activity is daily activities that require physical exertion. These can include things you do around your home, like cooking, cleaning, laundry, caring for children, or older adults. They also include activities such as going to the store or attending medical appointments. While physical activity is important for a healthy lifestyle, it is important to understand the difference between physical activity and exercise. How many of you think that exercising while in treatment is safe? Research has found that exercising during cancer treatments is safe, and in fact, actually has many benefits. Those who exercise regularly had 40 to 50% less fatigue than those who were less active. Exercise also helps mood, which can benefit those feelings of depression and anxiety that often go hand in hand with a cancer diagnosis. Those who stayed physically active during treatment slept better. And what I find really interesting and important is that those folks had less side effects with their treatments and improved blood counts, leading them to have better chemo completion rates than those who were sedentary during their treatments. In studies done on patients that exercised after completion of cancer treatments showed improved physical function, endurance and strength, improved quality of life, improved bone health, and decreased depression and anxiety. Finally, exercise helps control weight, a crucial factor as studies have shown that gaining weight during and after treatment raises the risk of cancer recurrence, particularly for breast, colon, and prostate cancers. I wanna highlight just a few studies that illustrate this point. One study of over 3,000 women found that women with a diagnosis of breast cancer who exercised moderately, meaning they walked three to five hours per week at an average pace, had approximately 40 to 50% lower risk of breast cancer recurrence, death from breast cancer, and death from any cause compared with more sedentary women. That is huge. That is the same kind of risk reduction women with hormone positive cancers get from taking hormone blockers. Another study included men with non-metastatic prostate cancer who engaged in vigorous activity for at least three hours per week had 61% lower risk of death from prostate cancer compared with men who engaged in vigorous activity for less than one hour per week. So this goes to show that it's never too late to get started with a physical activity program after a cancer diagnosis. When exercising during cancer treatments, you don't have to try to run a marathon or complete the world's strongest man competition. Research shows that moderate aerobic activity paired with some light strength training can do wonders. We'll talk about this more in a minute. So what are the general exercise guidelines for people living with and beyond cancer? The biggest takeaway is to avoid inactivity. Experts recommend trying to exercise at least 10 minutes at a time, spreading the activity throughout the day and the week. The ultimate goal is to build up to 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic activity weekly. They also recommend to pairing aerobic activity with strength training at least two to three times per week, working all major muscle groups. Finally, exercise should begin and end with a warm up and cool down stretches. 
how do you know what exercise setting is right for you? First, ask yourself these questions to determine if you should seek medical clearance from your physician before starting an exercise program. One, are you currently physically inactive? Do you exercise less than 30 minutes, three times per week? Two, do you have chronic disease such as metastatic cancer, heart disease, or diabetes? If you answered yes to both questions, it is best to seek medical clearance before starting an exercise program. If you answered yes to one question, do you have any high-risk symptoms such as cardiovascular or respiratory disease, previous stroke, neurological or degenerative conditions, recent steroid injection, or uncontrolled diabetes to would impact your ability to participate in exercise? If yes, please consult your physician before starting an exercise program. Do know that exercise is good for everyone. It is good time always to exercise in some capacity and may need to be tailored based on where you are in your cancer journey. After medical clearance is obtained from your physician, if appropriate, determining the correct setting and the right professional is important. There is a stepwise approach to these exercise settings from cancer rehabilitation, such as revital cancer rehab, to clinically supervised programs, followed by supervised cancer-specific community-based exercise to unsupervised or general community-based exercise. Cancer rehab provides the highest level of care for those who need the most specialized care or who are at a higher risk for an adverse event. These services are provided by rehabilitation clinicians, physical and occupational therapists with cancer-specific training in outpatient rehabilitation clinics. Clinically supervised exercise is performed by exercise physiologists with clinical certifications, ideally cancer specific, within a clinical setting, typically at a university or cancer center. When you look at community-based exercise programs, it is important to distinguish between if the program is directed towards people with a cancer diagnosis or general to the community. Cancer specific programs are led by exercise professionals with at least a bachelor's degree and hold a cancer specific certification. General community exercise is most commonly provided by athletic or personal trainers who may or may not have cancer specific knowledge. Another example is following a general exercise program by video at home. Individuals with cancer should have a slow risk for an adverse event and not currently have impairments or limitations from their cancer when participating in these programs. We mentioned a variety of types of professionals that work to provide exercise for cancer survivors. I'd like to take a moment to review the differences of rehab therapists, exercise physiologists, and trainers. These individuals can cross over some in the settings we mentioned, but their focus in delivering exercise may differ based on their background and education. Cancer rehab therapists are rehabilitation clinicians, mostly physical and occupational therapists with specific training in cancer and cancer treatment. They focus on improving outcomes, reducing the impact of impairments, and cancer side effects by improving your function. Exercise physiologists can work on clinical settings with supervision for those with uncompleted rehabilitation and exercise needs. They hold college or advanced degrees as well as are clinically certified through the American College of Sports Medicine or a similar organization. They also work to improve your outcomes. They can work in community settings as well as to provide individual or group-based exercise programs and have access to clinical resources such as physicians or therapists on staff. Trainers can vary in degrees of education or certification. They are held at home, virtually, or community-based exercise programs. They can guide physical activity and exercise to improve fitness. Many people with cancer can benefit from one or more of these professionals over time. The important aspect to ensure you're working with the right professional based on your individual care needs. There are many professionals who can support exercise during and following cancer treatment. They vary in their levels of education, type of care, settings, and focus on their services. Meet Joe. Joe is a high school history teacher. He is 60 years old and has been diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer. He has recently received surgery to resect his tumor and is now on chemotherapy. His current challenges in his day-to-day -day life 
are difficulty in reaching to the top cabinets in his kitchen due to discomfort and pulling in his abdomen. He's also feeling more unsteady on his feet, especially walking on grass. Lastly, he is more tired and has less energy than usual. How does Joe know he's ready for exercise? Joe spoke with his physician and self-reflected on the previous questions discussed. He did not have an exercise routine established. So he was ultimately referred to rehab with a cancer rehab specialist to address any challenges he identified in performing his daily tasks. Another part of rehab is to help Joe become independent with his exercise and physical activity. To begin the journey, we work to establish goals. Tip one, smart exercise goals. The first thing when getting back into an exercise routine is to come up with goals that you want to achieve. So the goals should meet the SMART goal criteria. They should first be specific. So our goals were to perform reaching tasks without pain and improve flexibility and endurance. They should also be measurable. We used a pain scale to monitor his progress. We also took range of motion measurements to measure flexibility but also looked at progressive activities he started to be able to do, reaching to the first shelf without a struggle or discomfort, and also tolerating half a day of work without fatigue. And lastly, the goal should be attainable and realistic within a reasonable time frame. We feel that three months was plenty of time to work on flexibility and endurance. Tip two is to monitor your daily symptoms. For exercise intensity, and to find your activity tolerance. One way to monitor your exercise intensity is by taking your heart rate before, during, immediately after exercise, and one to two minutes after exercise. An easy way to check your heart rate is by your radial pulse or your carotid, and then count how many beats per minute you feel. The American Heart Association states a normal resting heart rate rate is anywhere between 60 to 100 beats per minute. When exercising, you should see a gradual increase in your heart rate. If you experience any dizziness, chest pain, or tightness, or notice that your heart rate is sharply rising or dropping, that is a sign to stop exercising and let your doctor know if it continues to happen when you try to exercise. If you're working with an exercise professional, they will help you understand how to do these, as well as monitor these during supervised sessions. It can take time to learn this skill and having support to begin with will help build your independence with exercise monitoring. Smart watches and apps can also help monitor your symptoms. Some questions to keep in mind while exercising are, do you have any new or worsening pain? Have you had a fever in the last 24 hours? Do you have chest pain or tightness? Any recent change in medication or a recent or lingering injury? you're answering yes to any of these symptom or precaution questions, consider consulting a cancer rehab specialist. We can help you to manage your fatigue and energy levels and other side effects of cancer treatment so that you can stay safe and get the most out of your exercise. Tip three is to utilize the rate of perceived exertion or RPE scale. The RPE scale helps to quantify how much effort it takes for you to perform a specific task. Because Joe was sedentary prior to beginning his program, his goal was to work at an RPE between four and six, which you can see is at a moderate to somewhat hard intensity. This also correlates to moderate intensity exercise. During Do Joe's therapy, we also worked to teach him how to monitor his exercise intensity through his heart rate. He used his Apple Watch to track his heart rate throughout the day and during exercise. This allows him to rate his perceived exertion and view his heart rate to understand when he feels himself working, how hard he is working. This additional tool allows him to monitor his symptoms in relation to times of physical activity and exercise. Remember, exercise guidelines recommend 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic activity weekly. Tip four is to establish a routine that works for you. Joe's initial routine began with two times per week working with a revital cancer rehab specialist with his sessions focused on a multimodal program, including strength, endurance, flexibility, and balance training to address the challenges he identified at his initial evaluation. He was educated in a graduated walking program in order to improve his endurance and exercise tolerance. Initially, he was walking 10 minute bouts in his neighborhood, approximately one to two blocks. 
He also spent one time per week at the driving range, performing exercise and working toward his goal of getting back to golf. When he first started his program, Joe reported a six on the RPE scale when walking two blocks. As he progressed, walking did not take as much effort, and he reported a four on the RPE scale. He gradually increased the distance that he walked, challenging himself to work up to 30 minutes five times per week. As Joe improved, he began to decrease his frequency with formal rehab and increase his independent exercise frequency with a home program provided by his cancer rehab therapist. At the time of discharge, discharge from rehab, Joe had worked up to exercising with a walking program of at least 150 minutes per week and performing strength and endurance training at least two times a week in order to keep with the exercise guidelines for individuals with cancer. This is a resource developed by the American Institute of Cancer Research that shows how different amounts of activity influence risk factors for cancer. If you look at Anne's activity level throughout her day, she is pretty sedentary. She has sat most of her day and didn't get any daily activity. This will increase her overall risk for cancer or cancer recurrence. Then you have Kim or Joe who are getting more activity throughout their day. And if you notice, not all of their activity comes from moderate or vigorous exercise. Some comes from just being upright or being more active in general. Remember, the American Cancer Society recommends bouts of 10 minutes of activity being beneficial frequently throughout your day. This is exactly what Kim and Joe are doing. Their overall risk for developing cancer or having a cancer recurrence is lower. Rehab specialists can help you establish a routine that works with your lifestyle and will help you to achieve your goals. Tip five is to track your activity and progress. Another great tip to help you succeed with independent exercise is to track your activity and progress. There are many tools out there for tracking exercise. You can use a written exercise log, cell phone apps, smart watches, or a pedometer to track your steps. Tip six, make slow gradual changes over time. Make slow gradual changes that you can sustain. Don't try to accomplish too much too fast or create unrealistic goals. Instead, focus on one thing at a time. Slowly add in healthy behaviors. Example, exercise or eating more vegetables by replacing unhealthy behaviors. Tip seven, have fun and grab a buddy. Exercise is not one size fits all. There are many ways to be active throughout your day that can improve your fitness and lower your overall risk of cancer or recurrence. Start simple with taking walks, get creative. It could be dancing around your apartment participating in a cooking class, or walking with a friend. Grab a buddy or join a group. Using the buddy system is a great way to hold yourself accountable, monitor each other's progress, try new experiences together. Encourage your friends or family to be more healthy and active, and it's fun. Try to recruit a friend or family member to exercise with you, even virtually. Many community centers and gyms have live or virtual classes. If you're currently going through active cancer treatment or have additional health or fitness needs, try a medically based facility or ask for a referral to rehab so that an oncology specialist can help you safely achieve your fitness goals. Tip eight, reach out for support. There are revital cancer rehabilitation programs across the country and are here to support patients affected by cancer. Revital is composed of licensed physical and occupational therapists who are also cancer re rehabilitation specialists. These certified therapists can take a detailed history and more accurately evaluate the risk of certain exercises during ca your cancer treatment and following cancer treatment. They will complete an evaluation prior to developing a personalized exercise plan. They also discuss your personal goals and address common side effects from cancer treatment, including pain, fatigue, neuropathy, balance issues, lymphedema, and general deconditioning. For more information, check out revitalcancerrehab.com. Thank you. Thank you for your time today. You can find more information on our program at revitalcancerrehab.com. We hope to help you live well beyond cancer. Thanks, Deanna. That was uh, fabulous. And I really enjoyed hearing Joe's story, it sounds like he really benefited and possibly was uh, doing better physically than before his diagnosis. Yes, he was a wonderful patient to work with. And how's his golf game going? Oh, <laughs> it's going pretty well. 
Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so our first question is from the audience is, can use of a vibration plate be considered a form of exercise? That's a great question. I personally don't have the experience in working with a vibration plate. Um, have you, Kirsty? I haven't actually worked with them, but I believe that I hear a lot of people using them now. And um, I don't, I'm not up to date on the research, but my take would be they're working on their balance, right? Proprioception, yes. upright yeah. posture. Um, I think obviously that would be something uh, to discuss with your doctor and a specialist. So if we weren't familiar with a specific thing, that what would we do, Deanna? Would we Google it? Would we find a specialist in the field? Because Revital has such a vast network of therapists. Absolutely, yes. We have really great um, connection to uh, reach out to other colleagues and to right. and research to sh to support the interventions that we use. Yeah, um, we have another question from the audience. How are blood test results used interpreted as part of the program? Um, so are we speaking about um, like platelets and white blood cells? Right. White so blood cells? there wasn't anything specific on what the blood results were, but I think you could speak to some of the general things you would keep an eye on if you were treating someone um, being, uh, that has been diagnosed and treated for cancer. Right, absolutely. So um, we do keep an eye um, and, and use those um, results as part of our um, program, uh, depending on patient symptoms, uh, as in fatigue. Um, we also um, limit resistance training should uh, platelets be a concern. So yes, we do. Right, and we communicate closely, especially for those in active treatment. We uh, communicate closely with your treatment team. And um, another benefit of cancer rehab specialists is that they're educated to be aware of what to look out for and how to help you communicate that or communicate directly with your oncologist or your medical team that you're seeing some changes. Um, so very important with cardiotoxicity and platelet counts. And there are many things that cancer rehab specialists are educated to keep an eye on. Uh, we have another one from the audience asking, do you have any good exercises for feet neuropathy? Yes, so feet neuropathy um, is um, a side effect that we see often, unfortunately, mm -hmm. due to chemotherapy. Um, everyone has slightly different um, symptoms with regard to feet neuropathy, mm -hmm. um, but generally we work on desensitization um, exercises, we work on balance exercises, and how that also may affect how you're walking. Um, so if you have any concerns about neuropathy, that would definitely be something to see a cancer rehab specialist for. Yeah, with neuropathy, um, def I find balance, and I'm mm -hmm. unsure of your experience with this, but uh, some patients really uh, benefit from kinesio tape in addition to some uh, exercises specifically. But the more you, uh, again, move, do the balance exercises or the desensitization, I really have seen some good results with that approach. Um, okay. Does the program include working with a nutritionist? I'm guessing they're asking about Revital. Revital. Yeah, um, and I can partly answer that and then you can speak sure. to maybe Kessler has a, a more comprehensive. So Revital does not have nutritionists as part of our program, but mm. we do, we are educated to reach out and help patients find those resources. Do you have nutritionists that you have access to at Kessler? I do not. Right. But uh, I mean, I have reached out and found patients in the community, uh, you know, people that specialize in nutrition. Um, in my market, which is in Tennessee, actually the oncologist clinics tend to have dietitians or nutritionists attached to their programs. But obviously, um, that is something we would help you sort of figure out. Um, yes. 
Yes, I was going to say yes, so that a lot of the oncologist groups also do include, um, you know, have nutrition as kind of part of their whole practice and yeah. we'll be able to guide you in that in that as well. Yeah. Um, questions are coming in hard and fast, Deanna. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the from the audience is it is revital covered by insurance? Yes, Revital is covered by insurance, right? So um, individuals that come see us are looking to safely return to exercise, get back to um, more uh, functional independence and address any type of challenges they have doing their day to day, which is what physical therapists do um, and occupational therapists as well. Um, so we absolutely uh, are covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. So the, the, and again, uh, cause we're a national in my market, um, pretty much if you have benefits for physical therapy, so if you were to get a knee replacement and, and have benefits, it's the same thing. You have benefits to do cancer rehab. In my market, once your doctor sends an order, um, our front desk will check your insurance and discuss your coverage with you, how many visits, any co-pays. Um, so we're very aware of taking those things into account. And sometimes I do plan my treatments around, you know, how many visits someone might have over the course of a year. So that is something definitely on our radar. Um, okay, here's an abbreviated question. Have done yoga for years, mm -hmm. but struggle with positions now due to radiation and chemo, um, pressure to hands and wrist, have to modify poses. What can Revital do to help modify yoga, modifying yoga? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, working with a Revital therapist can really give you that kind of one-on-one -on -one and take a look at your body mechanics, um, take a look at your body mechanics and isolate muscles um, to kind of get you into poses and to help, you know, with the modification of those poses to make um, yoga more comfortable and enjoyable for you. I actually incorporate yoga in mm. with, to many of um, my sessions, um, say a patient, you know, uh, after breast cancer treatment or uh, a great for balance. So sometimes if the patient isn't, doesn't have background, but they're open mind, minded, then I'll incorporate yoga. And one of the things I love about being able to modify yoga is you can also modify it to say sitting for those patients that are struggling with their balance or their energy levels. Um, so there's a, we're pretty creative generally, right, Deanna? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all, all day, every day, we, yes. what we do is problem solve. Exactly. Um, here's another question. For a patient mm -hmm. undergoing chemo treatment, how does this affect treatment options? Would it be more limited? Um, I'm not sure I fully understand that. Oh, I, I guess they're asking, does chemo affect their ability to exercise? Yes. So um, actually a large majority of the patients that I currently see are undergoing active chemo treatment. Mm -hmm. um, so that doesn't affect your ability to participate in physical therapy and occupational therapy as a whole. Um, but what's a really great thing is that working with the cancer, with the cancer rehab therapist is that we're able to um, kind of take a look at what chemotherapy agents that you're on and uh, the potential side effects that come along with it and address those while you're undergoing treatment. So we can hopefully help you um, build you back up and get you to as uh, best function as we can while you're undergoing that treatment. Right. So. And sometimes, um, you know, I will help patients work around treatments and mm -hmm. they get to understand when they're not going to feel so great. And we talk about when to add exercise and functional activity into their day or week or month based on those treatments. Um, like all things, we would encourage those in active treatment to discuss with their oncology team. But generally, I've never had a patient not able to do even, you know, some simple walking or some basic balance activities because of their treatment. Right. Okay. Do you have an exercise program for someone left with a colostomy? Um, so that wouldn't exclude you um, from participating in exercise whatsoever. Um, if the your surgeon um, or physician had a specific uh, 
precautions or contraindications to what we would do, we would work around that. But that would not definitely not preclude you from participating um, in rehab. Right. So, yeah. I think obviously you would just be more aware of, you know, not putting the patient on their stomach to do an activity or something, right? Again, I think that one uh, goes back to problem solving. Mm -hmm. But yes, we we are able to work with patients um, with colostomies, um, with many, uh, you can work with patients who may be wearing bandaging because they have lymphedema, or there are many ways to get people moving. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so here's another question. I didn't exercise through my treatment. How do I get started now since it's been so long? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it's important to connect with a rehab therapist during, uh, you know, to see where you're at. Um, they can help you kind of get that baseline function and then safely build back exercise um, by talking about that RPE scale and getting exercises um, safely back into your routine. It's funny that you just said that because our next question literally is, is it important to connect with a physical oh. therapist who works with cancer? Yeah, so working with a rehab therapist that works with cancer kind of gives you that benefit um, because we do have that specialized training um, in how to address this, the uh, physical limitations uh, due to cancer and its treatment. So it would definitely be would be beneficial. Yeah. So for, for those, in case it's not clear, a revital uh, cancer rehabilitation therapist has done additional training and courses to understand many of the treatments and the um, changes that can happen after those treatments. So um, it, it's sort of similar, you know, some physical therapists are specialists in saying knee replacements will revital cancer rehab therapist, a specialist in all the things you're dealing with and how, how to get you back there. Um, I have another question. Since chemo treatment, I have been diagnosed with something akin to fibromyalgia. The more I exercise, the more pain I am in. How would you help me increase my exercise? I'm yeah. sorry to hear that too. Yes, uh, I am. Uh, I, um, I think this kind of goes back to being that creative mind um, and working with which exercises and positions um, don't increase the pain that you're okay. in and finding that balance um, that works best for that pers personal individual. Right, I completely agree with that because um, I think uh, I spent a lot of time with patients helping them really identify times of day, um, types of activities, uh, and in similar to the charts you were using in your presentation to record activity, often I'll use those to help them record pain or symptom worsening um, to really increase awareness on, give you more control on how you can do what you want to do without making that more difficult. Um, recommended, here's a question, I guess. Recommended exercise to avoid lymphedema after mastectomy. Thank you. <laughs> um, there are, uh, I don't think there are any specific exercises specifically to avoid lymphedema. Um, I think working with a cancer rehab therapist help you exercise safely. Um, but as far as I am aware. I so the thing with lymphedema yeah. is um, it is a lifetime risk. So we know uh, certain things will increase your risk. So the amount of nodes you may have had recepted, radiation to those nodes, that uh, there are certain things that increase your risk. What a specialized lymphedema therapist can help you know is there is such a thing as risk reduction. So we can't ever say if you do this, you won't get lymphedema, but we can educate you on what, what the things are that can reduce your risks of lymphedema. Some of those things, as again, exercise, um, not doing nothing doesn't help with lymphedema. And I think that's sometimes people don't understand that, but again, exercise is a huge part of lymphedema treatment. You may need a garment, uh, skin care, you may, a specialist PT would or OT would give you some exercises to increase your shoulder range of motion or, you know, your gait, depending on where you are concerned about lymphedema. 
and help you understand what you can do to reduce that risk. Um, here we have another question. Um, and if you don't know this one, I do. Can I see a revital therapist while seeing another PT? Would insurance cover? Yeah, that is a great question. I will defer that one to you. <laughs> so generally, <laughs> it would depend on the state, but I doubt it. In the state of Tennessee, you uh, would need a very special exception, and I'm not a, able to generally get those. So they would sort of say, finish one treatment and then start with another. Now, depending what you were seeing the other PT for, many of our therapists have many skill sets, but unfortunately, generally, I think no, but I would ask your insurance company that because they're all so very different. Um, okay, for, here's our next question. For self-limited patients due to fatigue, what else can you suggest that a patient can do to improve fatigue and strength, especially with those who are already considered frail? Right. So remember that exercising doesn't have to be, a, you know, like we said, running a marathon or anything like right. that. Starting really small um, and working within what you can tolerate is a really great way to start. And building up from there is kind of where we uh, try to go to get you back to where you want to be. Um, so could they mix it up and do some yeah. upper body strengthening in a Absolutely. chair, um, maybe with TheraBand or um, mm -hmm. just range of active range of motion? They could do some basic walking. Right. Exactly. Five minutes, basic minutes, balance. Five, ten yeah. minutes at a time. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, people are going to see more and more about the, the research that cancer treatment can contribute to frailty and the importance of cancer rehab in helping you address that. Um, next question, are all revital centers set up the same way with the same equipment? Have you been in every, every revital clinic in the country? I have not. I have not. Um, <laughs> Uh, that would be cool though. Um, yeah. so I don't, not, not all the same equipment, not the same exact equipment. Some yeah. have more or less and some have more right. or less therapists. Um, I think the training. So what I could speak to there is mm -hmm. all revital therapists have the same training. Um, we may have different pieces of equipment. I think generally the clinics have a lot of similar pieces, um, but, you know, I also have patients that never get on equipment, that that's not who they are. They never wanted to get on a piece of equipment. So they might want to do, you know, yoga or swimming or, you know, walking balance. So they're not all the same, but I think that's a, a, an interesting thought to go to every revital clinic in the country. Um, so, yeah. Basically, all our therapists have the same certification and maintenance requirements. So once someone's certified, um, you still have to continue your education, correct, Deanna? We don't get to say, I'm a revital therapist and I'm not going to learn anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Always learning. Right. <laughs> and lots of, lots of educational opportunities and mentorship, which is right. wonderful. Uh, we do annual training um, to keep our certification. Uh, we have another question. Do you do pelvic floor physical therapy? I personally do not do pelvic floor physical right. therapy. That's the more specialized certification that I do not have, but there are many centers that do offer that service. Correct. And there are uh, also uh, pelvic floor specialists who are also revital cancer rehab specialists. Um, and they can do uh, some really life-changing treatments. So I'm always in awe of those therapists. Yes. Um, I'm just trying to say, it seems like our questions are starting to slow down a little bit. If you had one key takeaway, Deanna, like what couldn't someone do that really feels like they need to move more? What would your key takeaway be? Um, I would say my key takeaway is um, it's not black and white. It's not you know, I have to run or I have to sit on the couch, you know, um, moving even just for a little bit is beneficial and it's helpful. Um, starting small and building up is, is definitely huge. So I think a lot of my patients are, um, have trouble of where to start 
Um, and starting small and starting, you know, small as with regard to weight, small with regard to time, and then kind of building up from there, doing something is better than nothing. So that would be my takeaway. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, sometimes I say to people, you know, it can be as simple as walking around your house, you know, for five minutes every hour or, you know, a few times a day, or it can be, you know, sitting up and down from your chair five times to break up that monotony, monotony. I can't speak now. <laughs> um, so, and I've just been reminded that for the person who had a question about pelvic floor physical therapy, we actually have a wonderful Living Well Beyond Cancer presentation on pelvic floor and cancer rehabilitation. It can be found on our website and um, I'll speak to that at the end of this presentation. So any of our past topics are on the website and people can go back and watch those in case you miss them. Um, so I completely uh, remember that when someone reminded me in the chat. Um, so for those watching, if you have any more questions, please throw them in the chat now. Um, otherwise, we're going to wrap it up. Um, I want to thank you, Deanna. I think it's always useful. I'm hearing this more and more. Um, oncologists are seeing the research and telling their patients to exercise, to move. Um, but I think by your presentation, we know that there's a lot that goes into that, even without adding cancer diagnosis and treatment. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So thank you to everyone for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our presentation on your secret weapon against cancer exercise. Please join us for our next Living Well Beyond Cancer presentation on June the 14th. In that presentation, we're going to highlight the stories of some of the survivors across the country we have had the honor of working with. You can register, watch past presentations, and locate a cancer rehab specialist on our website, www.revitalcancerrehab.com. Or you can call 844-473-8485 to speak with a Revital Therapist directly to find out if cancer rehab is right for you. Please be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date on new information, inspirational stories, new resources, and upcoming events. We hope you found today's topic to be valuable and look forward to helping you live well beyond cancer.